Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two, titled The Mouth and the Teeth, uh, as you can see from the title below me, and the key points that are above me. Uh, we've got the uvula, tongue, palate, and teeth. You might have seen some of those words before, you might, have, you might recognize some of those. Let's uh, talk about them, but first we'll see the diagram. So you have this diagram in your notes as well, and what we're going to talk about first of all is the uvula. Uh, it is the little dangly thing at the back of your throat. Uh, it really doesn't do too much. Um, sometimes it gets in the way, sometimes it can get infected, but that is the uvula. We're going to talk about that first. Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is this big piece of meat that everyone has in their mouth, the tongue. Helps with speech, moves food around when we are needing to chew. Um, we'll get into a little more detail there. Uh, we're then going to talk about the roof of the mouth. You can see we've got the hard palate and the soft palate. We're going to talk about that and how they all connect together. And last, we're going to talk about the teeth, which you should be familiar with. You need to keep white and clean and nice for pictures in your future. Uh, let's go. So the uvula. The uvula is a conic projection from the back edge, the middle of the soft palate. So it is the little dangly thing. Um, it doesn't really do much. It's composed of some connective tissue and some muscular fibers. It wiggles around. It may uh, trigger the gag reflex. It has a bunch of serous glands which produce saliva. Essentially, they keep it moist. Uh, but you have lots of glands that do that in your mouth. So what exactly is its purpose? Uh, we're not really sure. Um, so again, as a reminder, if you haven't copied this down, you should pause it here and copy this down. Maybe go back again and listen to me talk about it uh, after. Um, but make sure you have this in your notes. Uh, we'll go along to, you can see there someone's uvula is quite, quite long. Oh, and the YouTube video is cut off, but you have it in your, in your um, booklet. Uh, actually, let's see. No, I can't move it around here. Uh, you have it in your booklet, so check out that YouTube video and um, make sure you see the operation to remove it. It is something called electrocauterization. It essentially stops bleeding and makes a cut all at the same time. Uh, obviously, the people are all frozen for that, but sometimes the uvula that hangs down too far can really get in the way and cause a lot of issues, uh, choking and everything like that. So check out that video and then come back uh, to continue along. Again, it's at the bottom in the videos to watch. The tongue, uh, it should say the tongue, not he tongue, but you get the idea. The tongue is a muscular organ uh, in the mouth most, of most animals that manipulates food for mastication and is used in the act of swallowing. So mastication is chewing. So if you remember, you go back to our last lesson, chewing is a form of physical digestion. So it's a muscular organ in the mouth. A lot of animal, animals have it, pardon me, and it is used for chewing and swallowing. It has importance in the digestive system and is the primary organ of taste, which allows us to detect um, foods that may, be not, uh, that may be bad for you and also foods that you enjoy. Another major function of the tongue is to enable speech uh, in humans and vocalization in other animals. Uh, as I talk, I can feel my tongue moving around and as I think about it, it makes it more difficult to talk. So just let the tongue do its thing when you're speaking. It is very good at what it does, um, as well as when you're chewing, it is very good at staying out of the way of your teeth. Um, it, sometimes it gets caught but generally it moves around quite quickly. The next, oh yes, we will talk about this um, part right here called the frenulum and you can feel it in your own mouth. It is what connects the tongue to the bottom of your mouth, but most people don't have it so short. So a congenital disorder, or this means an order, a disorder that a baby can be born with uh, of the tongue is uh, that of ankloglossia. It's also known as tongue tie. That would be what I would want you to remember, tongue tie, not this fancy name. The tongue is tied to the floor of the mouth by a very short and thickened frenulum, and this affects speech, eating, and swallowing. So there are lots of different things that uh, it can affect. 
uh, but it's essentially a short frenulum that stops the tongue from moving around properly. It is a really simple procedure, I believe, to just freeze it and snip this and let it heal and watch it. Um, but um, tongue tie is a common disorder. So the soft palate, and you can go back to your diagram to see which part of that this is, but it is the back part of your mouth, of the roof of your mouth. It is the part right next to your uvula, which is the little dangly thing. So the soft tissue constituting the back of the roof of the mouth. The soft palate is distinguished from the hard palate, which is um, more the front of the roof of your mouth, um, in that it does not contain a bone. So you can feel the roof of your mouth. It has a bone, there are a bunch of ridges on it, uh, and then at the back it's kind of soft, and that might be the, so the part that swells up when you uh, have a cold or when you have the flu. Uh, you might feel like the back of the roof of your mouth starts to get warm and puffy. Um, that is the soft palate, it does not contain a bone. The soft palate is movable and is responsible for closing off the nasal passages during the act of swallowing. So. Uh, it essentially, when if you think about it, when it swallows, the roof, back of the roof of your mouth presses up and towards the back, and then it stops the air from your nose from getting caught up in the swallow because it needs to be suctioned. I just did it right now. Uh, you can try it as well. Uh, the back of your uh, mouth kind of moves up into the back to close that off. So it is uh, very, very important. Uh, during sneezing, it protects the nasal passage by diverting a portion of the excreted substance to the mouth. As you know, you can sometimes get a loogie in your mouth, and that's not good. And in humans, the uvula hangs from the end of the soft palate. So touching the uvula or the end of the soft palate can evoke a strong gag reflex in most people. Uh, so when you have a very long uvula, you're more likely to have a gag reflex, and that is very uncomfortable uh, for a lot of people. So the uvula is attached to the soft palate, and then as we move forward in the mouth, we are having the hard palate. So it is a thin, bony, horizontal plate made up of two bones in the facial skeleton and located in the roof of the mouth. You can feel it with your tongue very easily. It is bony. It is essentially the kind of bones that hold your teeth up there. It holds the upper teeth um, when the teeth are developed eventually. So what it does is it forms a partition between the nasal passages and the mouth. So the nasal passages go up in this portion of my head and the mouth goes in this portion of my head. And that palate, the hard palate, along with the soft palate, forms the partition between those. They meet at the back. Uh, on the anterior portion of the hard palate are the plicae. So that means essentially the roof of your mouth, those ridges that you can feel, those are plicae. Uh, they are in the mucous membrane and they help to facilitate the movement of food backwards towards your throat or your larynx. So those ridges are actually, they, f they have a purpose. If food is to get stuck up there over time, it will get moved back towards your throat so that you can swallow it and eat it. So uh, the plicae are those little ridges that you can feel with your tongue. I have a circular one that I always play with. I don't know why. It's right there. It's not on the other side. Um, you probably have different irregularities as well in the roof of your mouth. Those are called plicae. Um, there's a video here for a cleft palate so that you can check out. So a cleft palate is a condition in which the two plates of the skull that form the hard palate or the roof of your mouth do not completely join. So you can have a, a partial, you can have a full or a double um, cleft palate. Uh, in these cases, uh, you can also have a cleft lip, which is a hole in the lip that leads up to your nostril. Uh, and these can be repaired by surgery and are often barely noticeable. Um, but a cleft palate is a cavity, essentially, in the roof of the mouth. And it can be fixed at a very young age. And I encourage you to check out that YouTube video to see what that is all about. Teeth. Sorry about this. There we go. So teeth. Um, there are four different types in your mouth and they have different functions. So you have incisors. Uh, that is for cutting and shearing. Those are your front teeth. Uh, your big ones essentially. You have canines which are the pointy ones for holding and tearing. 
those are generally for meat. Um, we don't tend to chew meat very much, uh, especially early on uh, in our bite at the back. Uh, that is for the premolars and the molars that go at the back there for grinding. Uh, generally, um, our vegetables go back there, uh, as well as gum, because we like to grind up our gum. And there's something called the universal numbering system, so that w um, people can refer to teeth um, by their number, and you know exactly which tooth they're talking about. Um, I'm actually missing, I don't know the number, but I'm missing one of my front uh, teeth. There should be four in the bottom, I only have three. I got one pulled just because my jaw in the front is a little bit too small to fit all those teeth. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is in your booklet, there is uh, all of this room around the diagram uh, to use the universal numbering system to number the teeth. Uh, label each tooth in your diagram. I think there's one through 32. Uh, I'd also like you to describe in detail the difference between a herbivore's teeth and a carnivore's teeth. And I want you to use specific examples of animals. And then create a Venn diagram that shows the differences and similarities between the herbivore and carnivore teeth. So essentially you have two circles that cross over in the middle and all the similarities between the two go in the middle and then all the differences for a herbivore go on one circle and the differences for a carnivore go on the other circle. It is a very nice and clean way to differentiate all the similarities and differences in detail uh, between two things. Uh, so we're doing herbivore and carnivore this time. So lots to do. And if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you next time with Lesson 3. Thanks very much.